Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show my working process that I use for precision faceting of valuable materials. In these cases, I don't use standard faceting diagrams, but rather adapt the cut to the shape of the rough pieces. Let's follow the steps of the cutting of this bicolor fluorite from Colombia. So, we have already selected the rough pieces that we are going to cut. The first step is to perform them manually, eliminating the main inclusions and fissures, and looking for the optimal orientation of the crystal to get the best color of the gem. In this step, I give the stone its approximate shape, but without greater precision. Normally, I start cutting the pavilion of the stone first. To get the gemstone to sparkle and have no window, we have to cut the pavilion taking into account the critical angle for each mineral. If to achieve the optimum brilliance of the stone, I have to reduce its size, this is the time to do it. The crown has much less influence on the brilliance of the stone, and I can make it flatter or taller depending on the material I have available. So I start from the apex of the pavilion, setting the first facets at an angle slightly greater than the critical angle of the gem. The rest of the facets and the final outline of the girdle I cut directly on the fly, improvising and adapting to the shape of the stone without following any fixed diagram. In the next step, with the pavilion finished, I can create the design of the crown facets in the GemCut Studio program. To do this, I first reproduce the exact shape of the stone in front view, doing the virtual preforming with the help of the real photo of the stone and the overlay program. I think you will like this trick that I explain in detail later in this video. From there, I can design the crown of the stone to my liking and using to the maximum the shape and height of the stone available. With the diagram of the crown made to measure, I can cut it very quickly and without hesitation in the position and angles of the facets. And that's it, our stone is finished. Let's now look at some of these steps in more detail. Here we have the manual preform from which we start faceting the pavilion. Here, we have finished the faceting of the pavilion. This trillion shape with slightly flattened sides will be the final outline for this gem. We transfer the stone to another daub to continue with the faceting of the crown. This is the moment where we take a picture of the stone in front view and crop the sides a little bit to focus on the stone. For the next step, we are going to use the software Overlay 2.1. You can download it from this website. I will leave the link in the description. It has a free version, but to work without annoying messages, I recommend downloading the full version, which costs only $15. And of course, we will use GemCut Studio, this fantastic software for festers. Now, let's open the overlay and then open our photo in it. We can use the program controls, or even better, keyboard shortcuts to change the photo, which will always be projected on top of any other program. We can resize the photo, move it within the window, or even move the whole window to any part of the screen. We can change the transparency of the image and adjust it to our needs. If we choose the float setting, the window is disabled and the mouse click on it has no effect. We work with the programs behind it 
as if this layer were not active. But to change the size or transparency of the photo again, we have to exit the float option. Now let's open GemCut Studio. We place our stone roughly on top of the design area. Let's start by cutting the facets that make the corners of the trillion. This way, we establish its final maximum size and prevent the design from changing size as we add more facets. So we don't have to continually adjust the real photo to the size of the design. Since I have written down the index values of the girdle facets I made, the virtual preforming will go very fast. I set the angle of the facets to 90 degrees to preform the girdle. I have to make the facets of the triangle, that is indexes, of 0, 32 and 64 on the 96 wheel and also the facets of plus minus 2 and plus minus 4 with respect to the sides of the triangle. Now, the size of the stone is set and we can adjust our photo to the size of the design more accurately. To do this, we exit the float option and adjust the size and position to match the corners of the triangles. We can also rotate the photo if necessary. We can also adjust the transparency of the photo to the desired level. Let's add the other facets on the sides of the stone. First those of the plus minus two indexes and then those right on the sides of the triangle. We try to adjust the outline to the photo as much as possible. Although we can also adjust the size of each facet later to the size of the facets on the stone by eye or even using a measuring loop. For example, in this case, I need to adjust slightly the plus minus two facets, something I can easily do from the side view of the stone. Also, after looking at the real stone, I realize that I need to add just a little to the center facets on each side. Now my shape is perfect and I can start designing the crown. For example, I could make the step cut crown very quickly. Of course, I wouldn't need to design the step cut in advance. It is a very simple pattern and I would cut it directly on the stone but I have quite a bit of crown material left and I know from my experience that step cuts are not very attractive when the crown is too high. So I spent a little more time and came up with this triangular facet design which I like better for this fluorite. Now I want to adjust the height of the crown to the maximum allowed by the material in the stone but I want the stone to still have a good brilliance. To do this, I'm going to look at the render of the future stone, but to see it properly, I have to create a simple pavilion, similar to the real pavilion I've already cut. And of course, I have to set the refractive index corresponding to fluorite so that our rendering is more realistic. Fluorite has a very low refractive index, but even so, if it is cut at the correct angles and has a good polish, it can shine quite brightly. I adjust the depth of the pavilion to the actual angles used in the stone. Now everything is ready to visualize how the height of my crown will influence the appearance of the stone. I've measured the height of the space I have left for the crown on the actual stone and it turns out that I have a little over 4 millimeters. I am going to open the size and yield calculator tool and enter the width of my stone 
which is 17.6 millimeters. I can see that right now the crown is a little smaller, so I can enlarge it further. I do it by scaling the height of the crown until I reach the desired value. It would be great if I could directly enter the crown height I want to cut. But right now, I have to increase the angles little by little and check the result in the size and yield calculator. Now, finally, we have the required crown height. Once there, I check the appearance of my stone in the angle optimizer to make sure I haven't moved too far from the optimal values by scaling the crown. I like the result, so this is going to be the final design of the crown I'm going to cut. All that's left is to arrange the order of the facets in the cutting diagram, if necessary, and finally print it. Now we are ready to return to the faceting machine and finish the crown really quickly, without hesitation and without risking to lose more material than necessary. I cut the facets of the crown, taking all the care necessary when working with such a soft stone. After that, I polish all the facets. Here we can see the diagram we have just created that is guiding us cutting the crown. To finish, I cut and polish the table, and with that, the stone is finished. I only need to detach the gem from the dope and enjoy this new marvel that has just seen the light of day. I hope you liked this video. Leave me a comment if you found it useful or if you have any other tricks for preforming stones to fit the rough. By the way, using the same overlay program, not only can we make any shape, but it is also very useful for arranging the facets according to a special pattern. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.